All right, so here we go. These tools that I'm splashing down here, they need a home and a home on my body. I suffer from uh, forgetforitis, which is the uh, innate ability to lose what you're looking for. So whenever I'm looking for my tape, I can never find it. Or whenever I'm looking for my marking knife, I can never find it. And it costs me productivity, so I'm making a tool vest. So here I am uh, marking out a template, and this template is actually for the, um, the square that I'm using. So it's a template of the square. And here I am just cutting it out on the bandsaw. I decided I didn't wanna risk, uh, what I'm gonna be doing is molding leather here, so I didn't wanna risk ruining my brand new Bridge City square, so I cut out a wooden template. And now I'm just tracing the, another tracing the template onto another piece of plywood and here i'm cutting out what i just marked off and you'll notice that th there's a gap of 3 16 from the initial size of the template and that's because this is going to be the top press to the mold so i'm using a technique that uh, jimmy Duresta published in a few of his videos it works really well um so the 316 allows for the leather to actually go in between this top press and the the base template that i made before that i just made you'll see that in a sec so i'm just cutting it out carefully on the bandsaw it doesn't need to be perfect because it's just to mold the leather there you go so now, there you go. So you see the gap, and I'm sanding over the edges. I'm just rounding over all the corners, because when I mold the leather, I don't want it to get cut on the edges of this when I press down on it. Cool, all right. What a door. Okay, so now I'm gluing it up, and I'm just gluing it up because I want to make sure it's nice and rigid. Don't necessarily have to, but I was worried that that top piece, I, I didn't leave a lot of tolerance so I was worried it would break so I glued it and it didn't even break uh, so now I'm doing up the uh, the top plate for the Zippo and I'm not making a template for the Zippo of the actual size of the Zippo because the Zippo is made of stainless steel so I'm just gonna go right over the top of it uh, with the leather so this is just the top press it's the top part to the mold so I'm again adding about 3 16 of an inch to either side to allow for the leather to uh, fit in there. And now we move to the bandsaw again, just cutting it out. Now this was not a good piece of wood to use and I'm sure you can already see why. It was just the scrap from the last uh, last top plate that I made so I wanted to use it instead of using another scrap but I probably should have used something different and you'll see why shortly don't get me wrong it worked it's just wasn't ideal and you'll see there you go it's all cut out and there you go so now what I am doing is uh, scribing my utility knife. Uh, so I'm just marking the outline and there we go. There's the same thing. That's the top press for my utility knife. And I'm going right over the utility knife because it's made of stainless as well. It's not going to get rusty from the wet weather. Magnets. All right. The magnets. So these are super strong. They go right here. I do a test. So it goes right through the leather, no problem, with lots of holding power still. So, so now, um, again, I'm going to go right over the magnets because uh, they're not going to rust or anything. So I'm just making the top part of the mold. And that's the wrong line. Try that again. There we go. Excellent. Now I used MDF there and I was a bit worried about that because MDF and wet don't get along, but it worked fine. 
So here I'm using uh, an Ulfa, like it's a rotary knife. It's actually for sewing, but uh, it works really well on leather as well. It's plenty sharp. And now I'm just tacking down, uh, drilling down my uh, template for the square onto a scrap piece of two by six. The leather itself, I let it soak in warm water for about 10 minutes just to allow the moisture to get in there. And there I come in with the uh, the top part of the mold and tack that down. And for the sides that I couldn't screw into or didn't want to screw into, I just used clamps. And this, this process really works well. So thanks to Jimmy for the uh, inspiration. Here I go uh, just with right over the Zippo. And here's, you're gonna see right in about five seconds why that was a terrible piece of wood. Oh, there it goes, it broke. It's all good, I make do. Could have redone it, but I was like, eh, nah. So here I'm just cutting off some of the excess and clamping it up to allow the uh, leather to stretch over the Zippo. And now I'm doing the same thing. This time it's gonna be for my utility knife. And again, I didn't make a mold for the utility knife because it's stainless as well. It's not gonna rust. So I just went right over the top of it. And it would be a pretty intricate mold, but. And this one turned out really good, actually. It turned out well. It held its shape really nicely. When it comes out, you'll see. So all these molds I allowed to uh, sit overnight to allow the leather to stretch and dry. And here I am doing uh, the one for the magnets. And again, I was a little bit worried about the MDF and its meltability, <laughs> but it held up fine. The leather wasn't like super sobbing wet, so it was fine. And here we go for the Leatherman. Again, it's a lot of stainless, so it's not gonna get wrecked. And I really wanted it to uh, form to the actual shape of the, the object, so. And here I ran out of screws that were short enough, so I had to go off the side of the bench there. Now I'm taking them all apart, all the molds. And you can see that the leather has taken on the shape, the desired shapes. And now I'm just cutting them out. So uh, I'm measuring around the shape itself. Here I'm doing the utility knife. <coughs> and now I'm cutting it all out and cutting across the top to allow the knife to actually go in there. There you go. Now I'm doing the same for the square. Now I wish I had taken a little bit off, a little bit more off for the square. Uh, that was one of the mistakes I made. The square mold um, didn't hold its shape as well as some of the others, but it still turned out pretty good. And now I'm just cutting off the top for where the square is actually gonna go in into the, uh, the pouch. There we go. Just use an X-Acto knife for that. And there you go, fits. It was a bit loose on the side where my left hand was there, but it's, it's fine. And here you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm cutting a semicircle, uh, and that's to allow my finger to get in and actually grab the square. And you'll see that momentarily here. So there you go. 
And it actually lined up very nicely with the square itself. There's a little uh, indentation in the square so I could pull it out nice and easy. And what I'm doing here is using a set of dividers with a, like a, a scraper tool. I don't know what those things are called. I should look it up. But anyway, what I'm doing is it's a, basically an offset div set of dividers that allows you to scribe a line for where you want your stitching to be. And it, it, it's got a scraping bit on it that actually like goes into the leather so that your stitching is flush with the surface of the leather. And now what I'm doing is uh, gluing up. So you see that I got the square there and I'm gluing just using a some leather glue that I got at the craft store. I'm lining it up and then I use the the top part of the mold to just line everything up nicely and I clamp it so that the glue sets up. All right, so now I'm moving on to the Leatherman here. So just gluing it up onto the backing. So I used a tan backing for a couple of them. And clamping it up so the glue sets. Make sure you get lots of clamps on there for even distribution. Four ought to do it. All right, now I'm putting gluing on the, the magnet pad. And I just used the weight of my drill vise for that. And now I'm doing the utility knife, same thing. Shabam. And now I am freeforming uh, around my pocket plane. So I didn't make a template for that. I just went right over and I didn't actually wet form it. I just really worked the leather around into the dimensions that I wanted. I cut it to dimensions there and uh, yeah, it actually turned out pretty good. Now I'm cutting the backing uh, for the Leatherman and the knife to final dimensions. There we go. Yeah. Okay, now gluing on the Zippo case. Boom. And now I'm making a template to press on for the pocket plane. And now I'm making the template or... Uh, yeah, I'm forming the leather for my marking knives. And this really turned out quite nice, actually. I was really happy with the result for these, for my marking knives especially. The leather stayed nice and rigid. So here I am just cutting out uh, the marking knife holders to final dimensions. And there we go. So now I'm going to... Oh, uh, here I'm etching where I want my lines for the marking knife holders. And the part where I couldn't use the inset dividers, I just used a pencil and scribed into the leather a bit. And it turned out nice, actually. So now I'm gluing on the pocket plane pocket. And now I'm punching the holes. So I'm punching holes uh, for where the stitching is going to go. And I'm also, I also punched the holes for the rivets. And now I'm setting the rivets. And now I'm doing the same thing for the, for the square and for the uh, magnet part. I'm just punching the holes for where the stitching is all going to go. And I set two rivets at the top of the, the square as well. And here I'm doing the same thing <coughs> so for the the knife and the leatherman i set two rivets on either side of the tops of each pouch and that's what i'm doing right there yeah and here's where i start stitching so i used a saddle stitch i got better as i, as I went on this was the first one i did and uh the zippo one I wasn't completely pleased with, but as I went on, I got a lot better uh, just with the consistency of each stitch as I moved my way around. So saddle stitching away here. And I just used my uh, drill vise with a clamp to hold the leather in place while I did the stitching. 
And here I go gluing the marking knife holder onto the back, the backing. And now I'm stitching up the square and the uh, magnet part. And you can see that I actually had started the square but then I had to move on to the magnet part midway, and that's because the I noticed that the magnet, uh, the leather on the magnet was starting to tear away from the backing, so there was a section where the glue didn't hold. So I just switched gears and moved on to that. Now I'm back to the, the square. You can see the two rivets at the top of the square there. There you go. And now I'm punching the holes for my stitching. And also uh, setting the rivets at the top for the for both pouches. I was really pleased with uh, the lines that I was able to create for the marking knives around. I got in nice and tight to the form, and uh, it looks kind of sexy. And now I'm back to saddle stitching. And this was probably the stitching that I was most pleased with. I got a pretty consistent, pretty consistent stitch all the way through. Again, just more practice. I got better and better. Here I'm putting on the uh, the front of the or the well, I don't know what the anyway. That's what I'm doing, and I'm putting on the snap right there. So yeah, so the the front to the pouch the strap, I guess. And there I'm setting the snaps for the knife and for the Leatherman. It's my first time ever like using snaps and rivets and everything and it's super easy. I got those on Amazon. They were pretty inexpensive too, so. So yeah, just setting the snaps and there you go. Not bad. It looks better with the tools in there. And now I'm just doing more of the same. Uh, here we go, stitching up. And actually, this was probably my best stitching. I got really consistent. And I made sure that when I was pulling the stitches, I pulled at the right angle on both sides and just consistently. So here I go, continue to saddle stitch, and that's going to be pretty much her. That's the last part. So there you go. I've got my four panels. They're just dying to get onto a tool vest, but unfortunately the vest part's going to have to wait. So stay tuned for part two of making a tool vest. This was a fun little project overall. I give leather workers a lot of credit though. It wasn't nearly as easy as I thought it was going to be. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and most importantly, comment. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.